What are these? Look at these shame tires, Dean. What's going on? Yeah. Oh, look at this is some Dean vintage alloy night. The, yeah. What are these? Uh, these are Ford Pint. Mustang too, aren't they? Uh, Pinto and Bobcat. Pinto Bobcat. Ah, Bobcats. Yeah. Are you? You're not fixing it up though. Hey. No. Is it a greasy flip? Sure. Yeah. Let's just get rid of it. Yeah. We could do a segment, you know. Oh yeah, right? greasy flips with Dean. Every week oh. there's something different. Hey. Oh man. Greasy flips. Right. We'll have to wear like the outfit for oh, it. Oh yeah, you gotta get dressed. And up. get a haircut, you know. I don't know. Let's not get crazy. Clean up my act a little bit here, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> tidy what, up. Tidy up. Go to school. Yeah, get a yeah, get a job, you know. <clears throat> oh fuck, it's too late. Oh, what happened? Huh? What? Nothing. Bobcat, Bobcat enthusiast club. Bobcat Pinto. Population one. I think there's yeah. <laughs> You don't see them that much anymore, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I know, yeah, you don't see the plague that much no, anymore. But weird. there it is. Yeah. And they're not really worth anything either. No, it's a great it's a perfect Dude, Dean car. You can get these People would argue that cheap. you should Yeah. You can well, get you good can ones for cheap. And, and here you are. Well that you know, you're right. Uh well. And it's it's known to happen. <laughs> it's known to happen. <laughs> yeah, the sickness, the sickness. That's when they like they, you leave half your drink in there, don't finish it all. <laughs> I think maybe it's a BC thing, but maybe from sandbaggers. Yeah, I never from heard from the island where I'm from, but sandbagging. Yeah, That's funny. Over island. Woo. Uh, so far, a very sober Dean talking here right now. <laughs> As if, eh? Here, I'm right? going to strip the rest of the moldings off the door, mm -hmm. and you're going to take the emblems off the trunk. The and then the we trunk, can start sanding that stuff. I'll do a 150 hand sand on the trunk just because yeah. I have to massage. Uh, it's like a massage. Yeah, yeah. it's a massage. The car, yeah. right? When I was a kid, I used to just snap these off and not even think about it, right? So, you know. Oh, she's pretty tough in there, hey? You know. Yeah, she's, she's, well, it's going to take a little. There's probably four or five pins, so. Yeah, take yeah, yeah. Your yeah. Time. yeah. You know. Just a little bit of. A little bit of. Maneuvering. Uh, okay, well, She's anyway, starting to move. A little bit. It's kind of. Doo doo doo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Did you have this off before once? No, I've never had it off. Really? No. But you pulled the nuts off, I'm sure. Yeah? I there are no nuts. You just no pushed in. Oh, there's no speedy nuts on these at all. No, they're just pushed in, I believe. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, what do we got, Dean? Let's have a look at this dent or a uh, bong bonger, as you call it. That's a pretty heavy one. Ding. Yeah, so Long. it's a bit disappointing on an otherwise pretty decent deck lid. And so. really no yeah. no real amount of decent access. So we got a dent there and we're also redented. Well if you want to get technical. Let's get this one going first. We got so this guy here. I we don't usually on. use these uh, dent, dent puller stud gun things, but this is a situation where I'll be happy to use it because yeah. There's not very good access, and we're not trying to make the best one in the world here. So let's, let's just it. yank this dent out, and we'll see if we can how close we can get it with mm -hmm. one of these things. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not going to be perfect, but mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. going to be a lot better than that. That's yeah, that's, that's really a, in there. Yeah, that's good. So there we got a ways. There we go. go that's there. better. Yeah. So here's a good, almost. Oh yeah. An inch in. The old, look at the dent. Give her the old college try. Give her the old college. <laughs> yeah. Right cool. there. That's about the center of it. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. I think people can boom, see in the boom, shadows. Boom, right? This arch shape here. This we don't worry about yet. So. See in the shadows. Pull there, you, pull there. Push can... down here. And pull Which, up so, there. So as you, yeah. yeah. So you want to just. And you want to work this. So we're not going to get, you know, kay. as good as if we could get at it. Well, yeah. Perfect, and, but, you'd have to cut all this out and dull, and you could make it perfect. To our audience, Fuck, we can't like. get to it because it's a sealed two-piece unit in this trunk. Oh, yeah, so a, there's a good look at mm -hmm. uh, where we're at. I couldn't sleep at night knowing that gentle. Yeah, way. right? Yeah. <laughs> Couple wowies here. That one will fix. There's a better guy here. Yeah. Uh, this is all good. And then, yeah, well, the nice thing is that pie plate hides a lot of this. Yeah, well, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, it's actually good. perfect here. This is, there's not a dent in any of this, which is great. I mean, this yeah. is the worst dent, currently the worst dent on the whole car. Actually, you're right, yeah. Ooh, sucked the power down on that guy. Yeah. Lights went Day down. Hey, lift her up. Let me get another one. 
I'm gonna put a bunch in because it's nice to work back and forth. But I've had this thing for 10 years. I'm still in my first box of studs. Oh, you don't use it too often, no, I guess. Well, you don't really need to. It's yeah. great when it's the only time I use it is when there's no real easy way to get at the back of something. The uni spotter. Yeah. But, like, sometimes you get a quickie quarter panel damage and you yeah. just want to yank her. Sometimes you don't get a good ground. All right, stop. And we're done. <laughs> okay. Big high spot there. There you go, yeah. This is like, is it better than leaving the dent? Yes. I know. So, okay. that's better. Um, right. Old Eunice Slaughter switch <laughs> gun repair. Uh -huh. this, is, uh, okay. this would have been pretty high tech yeah. back in the 80s. Where's the pliers? One pass through the lowest of the worst of the dent, which mm -hmm. was kind of in an arc this way and more or less in a straight line that way. And it kind of gives you a good start on it. But if I go any further with this, it's just going to be mountains. So I'm going to take all these off. Okay. And then we're going to do another pass. And then, honestly, at that point, we're just wasting time. That'll okay. Good enough. Yeah. So to get these off, you can just give them a little. There. It's the best trunk that you have, I think. Well, everything I have is going on this car. Everything you have. Best everything. The best it of everything. It's any good, but it's the best one I've got. Mm -hmm. Well, the best of what we have. The best of whatever mm -hmm. crap yeah, I can get for free. Thank you for the people that gave us 60 Plymouth parts. Yeah, we have any number of your guys' pieces going on this car. That's right. Everyone's going to be so happy to see this car in her paint job. Ooh. We'll have to find a bridge to drive underneath like the original brochure. I'm putting the chrome wheel arches in. You can't have a 60 Fury and then just like chicken out at the last minute. Did it have them when they were new? It was new? Yeah, yeah. You know the one. Those big half moon things behind the tires. Oh. It's a lot better. So we're going to go here, here, just basically in between. Do, okay. do, do, do. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, then, and pull up a little. And then low. just tappy tappy. So pulling and up a little. And honestly, whatever's left after that, we're filling because Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, pulling up a little low and, and then tap down the highs again to get yeah. it best before a little. Two passes and, and you're wasting. Okay. Time. We'll keep you after up After two you. passes, you're, you're just wasting your time. There's the roughed out stud gun repair. It's not great, but it is um, a lot closer to the original surface. Very, very close to the original contour now. And uh, there was one over there that I did. And now we're back to sanding. Back to sanding. And Q Dean. Oh. Oh, and he's doing something I'm else. What are you doing? Are you polishing your new wheels or what? Yeah. Let's have a look at your new rims there, buddy. Are you using company almost... sandpaper on your rims here? Just some light stuff. I'll just polish it. Yeah, it won't hurt. Nothing. Look at that. You either it won't hurt bought it. a BMW or a Bobcat. Yeah, guess which one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean... Well, we got you're holding air, so you're vastly far ahead of where you were. I see there, we got three in the direction of this one we got backwards. No, I asked you, and you said you didn't care, so it's not backwards. It's just <laughs> different. Yeah. Well, hey, how fingers. are you today? Yeah. Oh, hi, Smiley. If anybody wants the Cavalier wheels... Oh, don't even. You think I'm going to put that up? Send $27? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's bare metal. We can't have any of that. Yeah, anywhere you see that is bare metal. Okay. We'll just do a little sanding on the back of the car here tonight. Get some work done. Some work done on the car. I have to... Uh, i got to drop the tank as soon as it's back in the other shop so that I can uh, fix the rear panel here which I had to cut to just slide the car in. You gotta just drop the neck, you have to drop the whole... I gotta take the tank out and they gotta desolder the neck. It's part of the tank. Because it's a Dodge tank. Well, yeah, it's a Dodge tank, so the filler neck is at the wrong angle. Well, it was 10 minutes to fix it. But... Do you like Uncle Dean more than life <laughs> itself? Yeah. Okay. Show us your sanding technique, Dean. Wow. I need some sanding B-roll. You know, I just learned what B-roll is. What's B-roll? It's just like, 
just like the kind of the like the generic shots that you put in between scenes, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. You should. Uh, I'd like to see some more of that because you can always add it into. It. Yeah. If right. You want, really, actually, you know. So this yeah. is like Dean sanding B-roll. Looking good. Sanding up some rust. Tedious work, I'm sure. Another winter snowy day here in the older draw at Scott's house. You can see her coming down here. Yeah, won't well, stop snowing. That's okay though, it's mid-November. Anyways. It's a cold evening, so we're inside. We're grinding welds. This is the uh, where the roof is welded to the windshield frame. So just ground the welds down. Put a little bit of a little bit of a you know skiff of what do they call that kitty hair on there just to make sure everything nice and airtight, watertight, whatever. Then a little bit of putty on there just to make it all look nice. So that's ready for primer now. It's gonna sand all in here for the color change. Gonna sand all that. And I'm probably gonna start on the floor. The, uh, the Dodge Dart had some amount of rust in the floor. Uh, not really life ruining, but uh, a little more involved than it looks like at first. Check out the new lighting, hey? It's like Vegas in here. Uh, so, if Vegas was a rusty shithole, well, I guess it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we got some the usual bullshit. I'm mostly taking this video so that I remember what it's supposed to look like because we got to hack a fair amount of it apart. Uh, I have this reproduction floor pan that we can look at in a minute, but it's uh it's disappointing uh the thing is we have to get this fixed before we can uh start worrying about the floor pan which doesn't cover any of that anyway so i'm gonna take the gas pedal out and then just rudely butchered most of this out of the way so we can repair the where is it here this is the this is part of the body this here that's the subframe so the body brace that uh, runs right across the car is rotten and here is uh, it's supposed to be welded from, so anyway the whole top of it's got to be rebuilt this has to come out so we got to just hack all this floor out of the way so we can work on the, the rocker's good everything's you know this is all pretty superficial uh yeah so uh, we probably won't make you watch the actual butchery so I, I, got, I got out. I was like, <laughs> you I was like, what is he talking about? Man? Okay, yeah, right. Then you're like, door. I'm like, oh, we did fix it. <laughs> Sorry, man. I am in love with the planet. Check this door out, you guys. Check it out. Here we are with the floor mostly bulked off. Uh, that's kind of the worst of it. Next is uh, I'm going to take this part and make a pattern for that. And then we need to make a new uh, reinforcement here probably section that in no point in trying to replace the whole thing it's just the bottom bit is no good and then we can get started on how much of this floor we're able to use and how much we got to make still have to drill these welds out and get that chunk off and, and that's about it probably replace up to about here this is this is all still really nice still primer on it there so not a big deal if we leave it there and the rest of it's actually decent, just where it was sandwiched in between, it's eating it away. So, 
Ditto here. We'll make this tab, cut all this shit out of the way, make this whole section of tube out there. And then we'll make that. That's also a heavier gauge. It's probably 18 or maybe 16. We'll check and make that. And then we'll start trying to fit this floor pan. Fun times. Ask me if I'm sick of welding this car yet. These are uh, the patterns for the three pieces we have to make. Oop. That's the, the top of the, uh, the across member. And this is the floor pan uh, top section. And this is the brace that seems to kind of just gusset the corner of the firewall to floor. Also toast. This is 16 gauge. That's 18 gauge. And where's the other one? That's also 16. Let's bend them up. good for one pass. I, think, I don't think we need to do more. Good. We'll bang these and then we'll tack it there and that's basically Alright well it looks like camera number five is packing her in here. Uh, not before we get a shot of the repair to the uh, main cross member here. Uh, that's just a start on it. Here's the floor uh, brace. Uh, that'll be an easy repair. Seems to fit very nicely. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to work on this floor panel repair here, but uh, so far so good. All right, there's a good start on the floor repair. There's the cross member repair. There's the floor repair and the floor reinforcement repair all laid out and ready to go. Just uh, dimpled that in there to match the original. That way the bolt doesn't stick up and it's all tight there. So that'll all work uh, just fine. Sorry about the camera. Just another one down, I guess. Same thing. I'm not going to go up here. This is all pretty good. Just going to go there, here. Same problem. We may end up up here. We may end up here. Whatever. Uh, here, probably, and up to there, and the piece underneath, and the body brace, and the frame is good by the looks of it. So, uh, a mirror image of the other side, except we're not going to go up there. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, <coughs> kind of sucks, but still so good, like, you know, the rest of it, this, so good, don't care about this, small change. It's easy to go further, but it just makes this one a lot. No, it's fine. There's lots there. Yeah, we'll just go right up to here. And then the new piece will overlap. This has to come out. This one's not as bad as the other side. But still got to be redone. Get a uh, 
a winter beater that I can more or less trust to start that uh, is slightly more presentable than my completely ruined Dodge truck. Uh, so, uh, of course, Richard talked me into this. Um, it's a 1998 uh, Volvo S90. Actually, a really nice car. Very low miles. Uh, very clean. Looks like a one owner car. And uh, just one little problem. It's totaled. at uh, light hits of the late 90s with this 1998 Volvo S90. It's a really sweet car, but she's it. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is get some uh, get the, some paint on the new doors and then uh, we'll start tearing this thing apart and we'll we'll uh, try and touch her up. So we got damage on that door, this door. Post, post is rolled a bit from the hit. And we've got uh, light damage on the quarter as well. And the bumper has been screwed back on. So that's got to be fixed. And there's also some small incidental damage on the back here. Other than that, pretty tidy. I'll be very quiet. Okay. All right. Yeah, it looks like... Uh, Volvo Winter Beater Challenge is underway here. Um, these are the doors from the parts uh, 960. I've uh, got one ready there, and here's the front door. And uh, you know, they're in they're in perfect condition. There's just no rust or anything, but they're the wrong color. So I thought it might be fun, in the interest of of whatever, to. Uh, to approach this job as though I uh, were just banging this off in a relatively kind of, uh, you know, day-to-day -day type of uh, situation. So, one of the things that we can do to save some time, is, I'm not going to paint in here. I don't really care because you don't see any of it. So, since we can see the trim panel comes to about there, I'm going to paint just past it. We're going to paint to there, it means we're going to clean all this up. We're going to pull all the uh, window fuzzy here, or the door seal. This is all fairly easy to remove. And we are going to leave the parts that are not easy to remove, because that's just uh, not here to make needless work on a very uh, low value car that I'm using for a beater. That can stay. It's just a tire sticker. Yeah, so front passenger side door, puppy dog. Uh, just going to give this uh, basically a cleaning with a scotch brite and wipe it all with wax and grease remover and then uh, mask it up. And then we'll uh, just dust some blue on there because I'd like to only hang the doors once. Once they're fitted to the car, I can uh, more or less just contain my prep and bodywork to the outside of the car, and maybe a bit on the hinge post where we are uh, where we're repairing it. Okay. I know we don't usually work on modern-ish cars here, but I thought, uh, in the interest of uh, just demonstrating a few easy repair techniques, the doesn't really matter. The techniques are largely the same. So let's just have some fun. There's one of the doors ready to splash the inside of it. There's some extra hinges from the parts car. We'll probably need this one, the lower one. I think the upper one's okay still. Anyway, just, you know, splashy splash. Right, didn't really take very much off other than the weather stripping. But, you know, prep it out, do a decent job, and it'll look fine. No one will ever suspect. What are we doing? Base clear. 
had the color sitting around for a while. So I just, uh, just gonna shoot it. Two coats of color, two coats of clear. Little splash of blue. That went very quickly. Uh, really, okay. Not much to report other than it's time to put the clear. Let's get this baby put together. Right, that all looks fine. We'll pull the tape off tomorrow and maybe see how they hang on the car. I have to fix my neighbor's Volvo. More light hits coming up. I cobbled the camera back together. Let's uh, sweep some of the snow off of this uh, Volvo here and maybe we'll see if we can get a door on it. Let's see how that goes. A little bit of a break in the weather and the shops are all full so we're gonna just get at this thing. Oh. Well I got the mangled doors off and the news is really pretty good overall. Little dinger there which is uh, pretty insignificant. A little bit of damage here, which we knew about. The key damage on this entire job is this B post is uh, rolled in a bit, and that's got to be documented for the inspection. So I'm gonna photograph this, and then uh, we're going to try beating it out. And if all else fails, we will have to take it and get it pulled, but it's so minor. I'm kind of hoping that a little bit of applied violence will uh, will sort it out. It's just, you can see from the top, it's not quite square to the post. It's rolled in a few degrees, and it's pushed out a bit here. Oops. It's pushed it out a bit there. A little bit of a kink here. So, not terrible, but this is the toughest part of, uh, of the car. Like, this is very strong in here. The fact that the car was hit this hard and that's all that it did, I think attests to how, how tough these cars are. There's a lot of sleeves in there, there's a lot of bracing, there's a lot of gussets, and there's a, uh, it's going to take a certain amount of force to pull that back. So give her a few taps and see what happens. That's what we call the first light toss. The uh, just the very first thing still need still needs adjusting and work. But uh, we're in the neighborhood. Front same, but front's better. But they both still need tweaking. But uh, overall, uh, pretty happy for uh, really one afternoon to have those changed and fitting ish. <laughs> All right, more, what are we calling this show? Uh, oh, Light Hits. Thanks for joining us on Light Hits. We'll be back next week with more Light Hits. A lot of people mentioned that they would watch another bit of trim repair if we decide to do it. And this car is uh, covered in stainless moldings, so as good an opportunity as any. So very similar here, this is the most critical piece and one of the most critical repairs on all of the car. See, I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually gotten wider here because it's been flattened or squished. So it's too wide and it's flattened here and this has gotten rather pinched in here and it's a pretty sharp dent and it's right on the belt line of the car and this is right behind the back window area. So. Pretty critical repair. The rest of this piece is not bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. There's some, there's an Audi in it there. And 
There's another one at the end here. You can see that. Can you see that? So overall this molding uh, kind of uh, pretty pretty poor but also the hardest one of the hardest to get on the whole car probably be two door only and uh, probably not too many left so uh, no choice really but to try to make it a little better and let's see if we can do it. I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to start by I'm going to start by unfolding this edge here so we can get at that a little better. And once we can we'll just start with the big pushing it out. Just start to get as much of it as we can out before we start picking at it. Alright, that I hope will be enough. Don't ever stretch stuff too much. Uh, one person had a good question which is why I'm not doing this on a, uh, an iron dolly or on, a, on an anvil. And that's a pretty good question. I guess the thing is that here we really just need support for the piece itself. Uh, the material is thin enough that you're not really having any trouble moving it around. And also if you're using something like this, uh, and you uh, pinch your molding between that and an anvil, you're going to stretch you're going to thin the molding and stretch it out and it's going to be very hard to get rid of the high spot or dimple or or whatever is caused by uh, by doing that. So in the case of this type of thing, unless there's really good reason to, I'm happy to just do it on a piece of wood. I mean, this is not moving, it's not bouncing, we're getting good action on it and the the trouble with this is, is not going to be having the... Uh, having the ability to move it is the trouble is going to be moving it too much or, or stretching it so um, that's the short answer or is that the long answer I don't know the wood is nice uh, it's not scratching up the rest of it as it bounces around and uh, it's actually a little quieter and if I come to a situation where I need to put it on an anvil I definitely will it's not really going to ruin it it's just a little easier does a little less damage on the wood that's all I'm going to just start by pushing down on the high spot there, or on the uh, on the trough of it, which is the ridge in this case. Seems to run at a bit of an angle, so we're just going to go along there and just crudely push out what we can. And uh, then we'll see where we're at from the other side. Okay, and we're getting the overall basic shape back, but now we're just going to switch to the, uh, the pointier guy and uh, we're going to pick up those low spots starting with right there. Let's get in there first and then we'll see where we're at. Uh, I was going to check how long this took. Oh dear, how did the repair go? That's right, where is it? There we go. So I've been beating on it for, it looks like about two hours. And I haven't filed it yet. Just trying to get the shape. And it looks like that's close. There's uh, the hammering inside. Again, no magic beating on it. So, uh, earlier I mentioned I'm happy to work on the wood. When it got a little uh, tricky in here, also happy to put it on a dolly. So that should all file and you can see that it's in the neighborhood already and um, you know, again for a car that's just a driver I think you can walk past that. So I'm going to file it and then we'll uh, see how it looks after that. Well, I'm going to call it there on the hammering and filing. Um, I think you could keep going, but I probably have two hours plus into that dent to this point. So let's, uh, let's just call it there and we'll sand it up. Okay, this time we'll walk it all the way up through each grit as we go. 
that's the 80 now 150 and you can see See what it looks like when you don't sand it enough. Mm. I'll do a little more. I've sanded the uh, piece with 150 and I finished my 150 on an angle so that anything that is not on that angle is 80 grit. And you can see those horizontal lines, uh, those horizontal lines there. Uh, here uh, are 80 so we have to keep going it's just a good way to tell and there we are up to 240 now so I'm gonna go 320 400 now sitting in 400 starting to look pretty decent 600 now Very good. Now we're going to go 800, 1000, then 2000. There we are, all the way up to 2000. And uh, just needs polishing now. You can see that the, the dent or dent was there. And there we go. It is. It's, uh, it does take time. There's no as much as I wish there was a faster way, maybe somebody has a faster way, I don't know it. But I think it's safe to say you could install that on the car and nobody's going to pick at it. And that was a pretty bad dent, so if we can get that one out, we can get pretty much any of them out. You know, still needs polish, but the polishing is not going to be the problem. Uh, that turned out very nicely, and uh, that piece can go back on. Still repair here, still one to do there. You know, there's lots to do, but that was one of the worst ones on the whole car, and that would have, I was not putting that back on. So. Very good. Uh, I hope you guys find this even slightly useful. I, uh, Wish again there was some magic way, but there is not. Just there's also no, there's no, nothing special about it. Just you know that did take three hours to do one dent. So if you got hundreds of dents in it, you know you're gonna have some work. That's this piece here. This goes from here all the way to the door, and uh, the damage was right about there makes me think that when the car was in an accident the trunk lid might have come up and dinged that molding. Uh, so that's just a guess but it's as good a guess as anyway. I have to sand and polish the Lotus Formula car here. You know I know John really you know he's not gonna be he's not the kind of guy who's gonna be mad if it's too good so let's just uh, really see if we can shine it up a bit more. I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with the way it looks, but again, uh, this is, you know, this is kind of a, kind of a fun little project and I've certainly polished a lot lesser vehicles than this. So let's give it a polish and see how good we can make it look. Are we done? That's very good. There's the Lotus all sanded down 1500 wet. Uh, now we will, well not now, it's getting pretty late. Uh, tomorrow we'll, uh, we'll start buffing that out and uh, it should look even better. Pretty decent before but you know, now it'll really shine.
it's that little bit extra time to make it look just that much nicer is yeah, worth it. Yeah, well, now it looks like a real showpiece, right? This is just to get the fanning scratches out. So that would be good. So you'll start at coarse and then obviously work your way finer and finer? Yeah. And... Yeah, you just want to be very careful. You don't go too far. That's plenty there, right? So from there, we have to get, see so if you go over here, you can see, uh, I doubt if the camera won't pick it up. That's still got sanding scratches. Yeah, you can see it in there. It. Yeah. And here, what you see is the scratches are going this way, and that's from this. Right? So you're not going to polish those out, because this is what's making those. So we have to go to the finer stuff, and then we take those guys out. And then once we have those guys out, then you just wax it. And when I realized how much garbage you could polish out of paint, it kind of changed it for me because, you know, otherwise you're just left with whatever garbage fell in and you're never happy. And then I realized if you could polish it, if you could get any kind of paint on there, you could fix it, fix it in post, as they say, wash your... Yeah, we haven't owned a Jensen Interceptor. Right. I don't know why, but... Right? There's your problem. Yeah. There's your a problem. serious lack of Jensen There's products in our house. You don't have an Interceptor. You need a car collection of all Mopar-powered cars, but none of them are Mopars. You could have some great cars. Oh, yeah. Well, the only one of the very few cars that would get me over the SM is the BFS LV. Oh, Well, if I do get to drive it, I'll be wearing a camera. So oh yeah. You can say, here's what his last moments look like. <laughs> yeah. Decided to uh, to polish the lotus body uh, just to give it that extra you know that extra shiny uh, so that was uh, I think a good idea I think in the end people don't usually complain if it's shinier than they wanted so I'm going to uh, Look forward to delivering that to uh, to John and to having Dave come over and stripe it. He's going to outline all that, and then we're going to write Lotus back here, and uh, so that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it because uh, I always like watching Dave, just watching the guys who can paint all that by hand. That's so cool. I don't even try. So, yeah, fun Lotus project. A little different from the usual scratch and dent. All right. Dude, this is like unwatchable for. Uh, it's all unwatchable. Why unwatchable. stop now? <laughs> yeah. People are gonna just turn off their 
Yeah, good, good night. They just dropped the computer. It's a regular ah, contributor. Same old shit. <laughs>